What's your name? My name is Olivia Hutchins. And uh, and you're here at the hearing for Charles? Yes, I am. And, uh, and so what brings you here? Because family, family, he's my cousin, and I'm just sick of the, the unjust system that we have and locking up our young black and Hispanic males for crimes that they have not committed. And it's about our time to, like, step up and stand up and not accept that anymore. Okay. So, Leah, you are here mm -hmm. at the Springfield Court. Why? Yes, I am. I'm part of Free Chuck, Free Charles, Justice for Charles. Um, I just got here this morning. I have to head out early because I have to go to work, but I've been involved with this um, probably since... January. <laughs> and and what is this? What's happening with Charles? What's what's this whole thing about? And Charles' evidentiary hearing is today. Um, he was thrown in jail, with no evidence really, and sorry, uh, I'm I'm too distracted. I can't. Okay. So your name is Vera Duangmini Cage. Yes, and you are. Chuck's aunt. Yes. And you are one of the people who has been very instrumental in bringing this about. Uh, yeah, I just happened to have um, attended the trial and I just happened to be able to read the discovery that Charles provided. And um, like Iman said, you know, it was Charles who knew he was innocent and had the information that he was innocent based upon the discovery because. Um, he was able to comb through it first and highlighted things for us to read. So we're just trying to catch up to where he's, you know, been knowing all this time. So um, it took us a while, but we got there and um, we're here. Yeah. And and you, I really want to commend you and your perseverance. That um, that this is this has not been easy. It's an emotional um, crisis because. You know, um, I've never been incarcerated before, um, and Chuck is in there for natural life without the chance of parole, and that still exists for him today because today's um, outcome is still to be determined. Um, so right now, he's still looking at natural life without parole, and if we were in a, the state of Georgia, it would be the death penalty. He would be in death row, and that's pretty severe, and, uh, you know, the, the gravity of that takes a toll on anyone. Um, and he just happens to be um, somebody I got involved with through my family, um, getting to know his case. And I'd never had a relationship with him before, you know. Um, and now we have a lot to talk about. And um, I've, I've grown to, uh, I've always respected him um, just for the way he, he carries himself. And a lot of people regard him highly. You know, he's well liked by his peers. And uh, he stands up for himself. And uh, he's not afraid to cop we're down and unfortunately those qualities are not deemed um, good qualities in some people's eyes you know they want you to act accordingly and act a certain way to to authority and uh, I think you know we've been raised to stand and, 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 and have dignity you know our generation our younger generation we're not you know we, we we've, we've, we've been taught equality and so we don't know what it what it felt like to to have a white bathroom and a black bathroom we don't know what it felt like to be um, overtly told you cannot come in here. You know, we've we felt a certain way, you know, now because the, the you can't legally do that and you can't legally say and write certain things, but certainly um, there there is uh, inequality and certainly there is segregation. And, uh, and, and today we're about changing the way people perceive each other and changing the relationships and the dynamics of, of power um, because we're claiming as a people that we have power too. And uh, the more we give up the power, our power, the more at the mercy of their uh, uh, we're at their mercy, um, and so we don't want to be at anybody's mercy, you know. No one has the right to take away our life. No one. And I um, just wanted to let you all know, too, that the victim's family deserves justice because he deserved a quality, thorough investigation, and that didn't happen here. Um, what we've read, what we saw is remarkably sad to know that professionals 
are doing this. Professionals are letting go folks that have tested positive for gunshot residue, both hands front and back. Um, have the nerve to get on the stand to say you can have positive gunshot residue by picking up gun shell casings. Where's the school that trained these police officers or these detectives to understand that concept? Because they need to shut down that school, you know? And, uh, and how do we allow a system to lose a car and only have it turn up the day before the trial, the car that the victim was found in? These are the truths and these are the facts and these are in the, uh, the trial transcripts, okay? Um, how do we allow com the Commonwealth, allow folks to come and take a stand, un be under oath and, and be encouraged to lie. We don't want that. And now we have a mess. We have a mess because somebody is serving a natural life sentence for a murder that he did not commit because a lie was allowed to take the stand. And now we have a recanted um, an affidavit, recanted trial testimony from the Commonwealth star witness, the only witness that the Commonwealth had. The Commonwealth had to find this young man while he was incarcerated awaiting his own trial for for a car theft charge. They found him and they visited him twice and by the second time they showed him a single shot, a photo of, of Charles Wilhite and asked him if he knows this, this person. He said no and then they said, well, you know now it's Charles Wilhite and now we have today. So we want to stop the single photo array um, that, that because it's not an array. We want to stop that. We want to implement reforms. We want Springfield to uphold the Department of Justice guidelines lines for doing photo arrays to uh, to lower the the rate of wrongful identification um, we want to be at the forefront we don't want to be at the back seat of progress so we want to move Hamden County to a level of, of of justice that the people of Springfield deserve so we want to be able to say that yes that we are adopting the Department of Justice guidelines we want to say um, yes we are we're committed to justice. We're committed to um, ensuring that innocent people do not have to serve time for, for crimes they did not commit simply because they can't afford an attorney to spend, you know, 200% uh, on their cases. You know, because right now we understand that uh, Charles had a, had a public um, defender and uh, there were a lot of cases similar to Charles that came up. And so Charles' case was left at the very end and I, I believe that it was too late by then to really push for innocence because if you actually just would have read the materials you would have known that we could have dismissed this earlier on um, and, and what what was problematic is that we had an assistant district attorney Spellman who ran for election and lost and came back to the case so we have all of this um, scenario so so all of this you know all of these things that were part of the constellation arrived us to this point so um, there's a lot more to say but uh, we have a, a nice um, CD that the um, the young men have put out and um, just on Charles Wilhite we are one we are Charles that's our model because Charles is, is a lot of people Charles is, is us Charles is our brother our son Charles is our husband you know Charles Charles deserves justice because we all do so hello what's your name my name is Douglas Ross and I'm from Springfield Massachusetts um, near the Birmingham Mass area uh -huh. and you're here at the uh at the hearing, and uh, so what? Did, what's brought you here? What's brought me here is that lately, over the past couple of years, there's just been a lot of cases of police brutality against young black and Latino men who are stereotypically from the hood and are stereotyped as criminals and menacing lawbreakers. And the fact is, is that that's not true. And I'm here because I'm here to stand up for justice for everyone, all people all around the world, as much as I possibly can, while at the same time trying to fight my own internalized prejudices against other groups of people. That's pretty good to, to acknowledge that. I'm really impressed. Um, so how are you doing that? I do it by a lot of times I like to write a lot of things. And when I look back at what I write and reflect on it, the kind of society that I would like to live in, I'm very impressed by that. And also through my activist work that I'm doing. Uh, one of the things that I'm convinced of is that the, it, we, have a, we have to have a community to support us. And you're obviously part of Charles's community. Um, how about you? Where's your community? I don't really know, to tell you the truth. 
I have, if I have actually found for myself a community, I mean, I'm through my social justice activism work, I've been finding these different communities. But myself personally, I don't think I have yet to find a community. But you're here with all these people, and I actually saw you talking and hanging out with people. So, uh, so maybe I'm I'm laying a, a kind of language on you that you would say, well, no, I, I don't know about community, but but you have a you would have a different way of, of talking about that. I don't know. I'm being completely I'm being completely honest. So. Sure. Yeah. So, are you getting support for the work you're doing? Of course I am. I always get support every time I'm here from my friends, my peers, from the people who wave at you that support you in cars. So, yes, I always get support. Yeah. But myself personally, because like I acknowledged previously, my own internalized prejudice, I myself personally have not found that community yet. Yeah. And until I overcome those prejudices, I'm always going to feel this way. Yeah. Well, thanks. And thanks for, for your willingness to, to, to look at those internalized prejudices that I think most of us have. I think probably we all have. I think if people acknowledge their prejudices against, whether it's against black people or gay people or women or, you know, poor people or whatever, it would be a better place. But unfortunately, people are not willing to do that because they're afraid of what they see in the mirror. Well, let's see. You're willing to do it. I'm willing to do it. And my friend Amy, who's here and been listening to us, she's willing to do it, too. We keep trying. Yeah. And that's how it changes, isn't it? You know, yeah. each of us keeps working. Working. You know, it's that, it's that awareness, and then we say, well, what am I going to do about it? Because I don't like it in me. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You are. Tell me what you're doing here. Um, my name is Sheldon Gaynor. Um, I'm here to support uh, the Charles Will Height campaign. Um, I'm sitting here with uh, Kyrene Tabar. He's an artist with us. Um, I actually uh, run a label called uh, Like It or Not LLC. And, um, Say that again. Like It or Not LLC. Um, we just pretty much um, spread uh, positivity for the community. Um, we, we use our music as a tool for education. Um, we came out with a recent LP called Mass Incarceration, which um, talks talks about uh, Charles Willite and the story of him and a song to contribute to him, also Three Strikes and uh, Melvin Jones and Jeffrey Asher, things of that nature. And we're just here to show our support and, you know, because it's deeper than just, you know, making a song and you publish it for your rights and for your game. You come here and you support them as well. So we're just here, you know, doing our part. So you are Springfield local? Yeah, born and raised. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing the kind of things that are all of a sudden there's this a breakthrough in Springfield. Yeah. Like, how, how do either of you guys understand this? What's going on? Um, pretty much, um, we, we try to help fuel it. You know, you, you got the Kindle, and, you know, you spark that fire, and, you, you know, you fan it, and you let it grow bigger until you can throw more wood, and it becomes a bonfire, you know? And um, we're just out here, you know, being our contribution as young people, because our group is, like, comprised of 19 to max 24-year-olds, and that right there is the future. So we bring that down to the seedlings, down to the middle schools, the elementary schools, the high schools, and we educate them. So that's pretty much yeah. what we do. So what have you got to say? I mean, you know, he said everything that needed to be said. We here, unity, powers in the people, and we here. We fighting for justice. You know, exposing all the injustices that need to be exposed. You know, peace. <laughs> so how can people get a copy of your song or download it or uh, we've hear actually it? Uh, been producing hard copies we actually reprinted another 200 uh, CDs um, we usually go around and distribute them like five dollars a piece because you know it's hard to get you know hard copies of things out but um, we also provide you know a listening like you can stream it online if you actually uh, Google mass incarceration LP you can easily mass incorporation no, mass incarceration mass incarceration Yep, LP. Yep. If you Google that, you'll find you know a whole bunch of different links. There's uh, featured on the Blackstonian. Um, don't don't profile me.com.org dot com. Dot org. Sorry. Dot org. Don't dot profile org. me. Dot org. Yep. And um, it's on a, a mixtape series called That Piff, where you can stream it. And it's just you know just getting out there into the hands of the people. We also uh, have a couple artists that came out. Um, Kishtifer. He made he came out with Kishtri in the making. We have um, another artist named Intel. He came out. With 
protector of mankind. And one of his hot to um, topics for debate is um, called Institutions to Church. And he goes around and just and just basically talks about how how the how the church is another you know set of institutions. And it's actually going around for college discussion, and they want to bring him in and talk about it. So it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Also, a um, black Estonian. They are Boston. <laughs> yeah. And we here, man. You know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. Kareem Tabar, shells, Tokelis. Tokelis. We here, man. So, so you came to this this uh, hearing today in the courthouse, and you know, you're also working with with kids. You said this. I love this. The seedlings. Yes. You uh, you wonderful active youth. Activism. And now you're working with these youngsters. And how are you getting into the schools? Um, we actually haven't got into the schools yet, but we plan to um, do that. We actually just haven't like set it up yet. So with that, you know, we actually talk to kids on the street, just you know, walking around. We see kids that are not in school. We're like, hey. Why, why aren't you in school? I remember um, we met um, a few Latinos that were just in the park just playing, and uh, we're like, why aren't you guys in school? And she was like, me habla no habla español. And I was like, well, me habla español. And she was like, she didn't think I spoke Spanish, so I, I hit her with some knowledge, and she was like, oh, and she tried to switch it up with Spanglish, and I was like, you can't, you know, fool me. So we we, we sat down, and we had a talk with her, and, and, you know, we just go around and do our part, do our thing. We do a, um, we do a lot of, you know, community action, um, actually a violence chair mentor um, certified uh, I work with Roca I work with Johnson Life Center basically uh, individuals that get out of jail and they look for guidance young kids you know we, we help them get in, get back in school we help them get jobs we help them get back on that right track so they won't go back to what they know best so you know I'm a volunteer and that's what I've been doing for about two years just more so giving back to the community and trying to make it a better place so we're always involved in the community and trying to just do stuff for our people, because we living in a crazy world, you know. We all can see it. The court system, you know, they it's all corrupted. So, you know, we just here to try to have a voice and stand up for our people. Word. So, thanks for this. What did you say? It's a great CD. So, yeah, oh, you heard the CD? She, 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 go, she, she can tell you a little bit about our CD. Well, the CD that you made, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the music is great. Then they've got a lot of excerpts from the yeah. trial papers. I mean, it's the history in there. Plus, they bring in Asher, Jeffrey mm -hmm. Asher, yeah, yeah, yeah. Melvin Jones. And that's what I can yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. So you're on a roll. Really good things are happening. How, how, what ideas do you have about how the community at large can be more supportive to keep this moving? Um, I'd say just keep talking about it because you know if you stop talking about it it's eventually going to die down you got to get it in the ears of the people um, I remember when we was uh, uh, promoting the uh, three strikes campaign you get a free trip to Boston you get a seat and a lunch for Boston go out to Boston to protest against the three strikes bill and overnight literally overnight the Coney 2012 uh, conspiracy thing just popped up just literally blew up overnight and I only have like three days to promote this and I was like what's going on everybody's talking about Coney Everybody's talking about Coney. It has made me so upset. And um, just basically, you have to you have to fight uh, any any kind of oppression for your promotion. Like um, when you try to get a word out there, and you see somebody talking about something completely irrelevant, completely nonsense, you you break it down with them. And you and you keep you you add them to the team to help promote this. You go out in the streets and you and you make sure you have a message. When people see you, they have a, a, a burning desire in you, and they're like, "What is this guy talking about?" And then they start listening. And they're like, you know what, you're right. And then they, they you, you tell them to tell other people. And that's what creates, you know, the explosion of, of promotion. Just you you tell them to tell other people. It spreads out like like trees. You know, the root, it, it just spreads out. And the root makes more roots. And, like, you know, one makes two. Then two makes four. You know, it keeps on going. Well, also, um, people are, they're going to get involved anyway because, you know, if you look at it, we all 
all struggling. So I'm coming along, sharing my thoughts with you and the things I'm going through and talking about, you know, what's going on in the world. And that, that person is looking at me like, wow, I'm going through the same thing. You know what? Let's unite together and let's fight for the cause. And there's a lot of people out here. You'd be surprised. You know, just a lot of people know how to run and hide. And, you know, they, they, they can't stand up for themselves. So that's where we come in at. We, we're trying to show them, like, listen, we're young, but still, you know, don't be afraid. You know, you got people behind you, you know, and that's where it goes in at, like, just the powers and the people. Like, the more we come together, the more they can't stop us. <laughs> you know, that's what it is. All right. Okay, so so you're Ed, and I met you a, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I was that, that's right, the Three Strikes March, and you are Charles's uncle. So so we're sitting here in the courthouse. What what's going on here today? Well, we're, we're here because the judge has allowed an evidentiary hearing, um, a chance for people to come back and tell what they you know what they really witnessed and what they didn't. So it's for the new evidence. Um, hoping to um, shed some light on what really happened to Charles Moore and what really happened um, is, is different from what they said happened because you know he's been charged with first degree murder and you, I mean you have to commit one I thought to be charged with one but obviously that's not the case so, so but something really amazing in American justice seems to be happening right now and and that is this hearing right today right this hearing is yeah. um, um, I don't know of anybody that's heard of such a hearing here in Springfield like this. And because, because, and that's what that's what I want our our, our yeah, this viewers is rare. to understand. <laughs> this is rare. I don't think it's happened before with a murder case, especially under this judge. Yeah. So, so th what do you mean? It was under a 25-2B. Now. For those of us who don't know what a 25-2B is... That's a chance, B2, for the jury to set aside the guilty verdict from guilty to not guilty or order a new trial. And and how did this come about? Because this is, as you said, it's unique for Springfield. It's pretty unique for... This is unique for the country. Yes. Well, it's because they um, you had recant. Um, people that said it was Charles came back and said that it wasn't Charles and that they're willing to stand up, which they'll be doing today, and telling that that never happened and that they were coerced into saying it. So, so two people, two people. Who, who testified in the original original trial yes. that he had committed the murder have since recanted yes, yes. privately or to the judge, to a lawyer. No, he did it to the lawyers and to the private investigators. And now the judge has said, I'm willing to listen to this. Absolutely. Oh. And so we're excited and hopeful that they'll come around and do what's right. Yeah. So uh, I understand you uh, you were one of the prime movers in getting this uh, to this stage. Well, I didn't give up, and as none of us gave up, you know, it's just what, what faith do you have in the system? I don't have much because I already know what's capable by a system that's failed. So so here you are, you and your family, who no. So here you are sitting in a courthouse, Anna Marie. What you doing here? Oh, I'm here for justice for Charles. <laughs> yeah, what's... What? Young fellow in prison for murder. Uh, suspect uh, evidence put him in prison, facing prison for his, quote, natural life. Mm. And uh, I'm here for justice. So, so this is pretty extraordinary. I mean, usually people of color get arrested, get convicted, mm -hmm. you know, go to trial, get convicted, and, uh, and that stays. What happened here? One thing that happened is that uh, 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 what started as a family, a group of family members got together and said, you know, we're going to try to fight this. Uh, it grew into a, a community, camp, community campaign, and that's one of the major things that sets this apart, Charles's case from so many other cases, um, is that people decided that they're going to try to, exp 
makes make this process transparent so frequently it's 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 secret it's it's uh it's just it's just shrouded in darkness the whole thing right and so the more the people are talking about it the more it's exposed the more the district attorney has to be accountable the more the judge has to be accountable you know just the whole system has to be a little bit more accountable the more that we pay attention um and so that's in my opinion the biggest thing that's set charles's case apart now Another thing that seems really unique here is the judge. The judge decided to take an action. Yeah. And and do you, who is this judge? I mean, his name is uh, Peter Vilas. Um, he was the judge that presided over the trial. He's now the fact that he had so he he's not only considered this B twenty B. 25B2 motion, right? And, and, and just for, for those of us who speak pretty plain English, what is that 25B2 motion? 25B2 means that maybe there's enough evidence to, um, that shows that there have been significant injustices in the, tri in the trial that what the jury came up with is maybe actually wrong. Um, that's most layman's terms. Um, it's a bit of an oversimplification, but... Um, but if some of us appreciate those oversimplifications. <laughs> I think it's, it's, that was clear. Thank you. Um, yeah. And so it's really unique what he's doing right now, because he's, he's not only um, considering the 25B2 motion, but now he's granted an evidentiary hearing. So like, it's rare and then even rarer what he's doing right now. Um, and it's, a bit, it's, it's really significant, too, just that this human being is doing this, because it's... He's saying, I may have made a major mistake. People don't, in, in such positions of power, don't frequently do things like that. OK, is there anything else you want to say about what's happening that I haven't thought to ask you? Well, this is a really in interesting time right now in Springfield, right? I mean, there was the Justice for Trayvon Martin March, um, which had 1,700 people in Springfield just, just a, a week ago. That is the biggest march in Springfield in decades. Uh, Jeffrey Asher, who was a uh, a former police officer, officer was just set, sentenced to 18 months behind bars for um, the, he was convicted of, of assault and battery, and assault and battery with a dangerous weapon for the assault of Melvin Jones um, with, a, with a metal flashlight, just, just hit him and hit him and hit him and hit him. Uh, that doesn't happen very often that police officers are convicted and then sentenced to a time behind bars. Um, so right now, the, 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 this issue is hot. Um, you know, police brutality, racial profiling, um, uh, police misconduct, and, and racism within the prison industrial complex. And so this is a really exciting time for us to get involved in the movement, yeah. uh, to, to, to get out to Springfield and get involved with what's going on in Springfield, to talk about what's, how this connects to what's happening in Northampton as well, like the, the preserving our civil rights campaign. Um, it's all connected. got to get involved. So what's your name? My name is Dan Keefe. And Dan, you're here with, uh, in the courthouse in Springfield. How come? Um, because Charles Wilhite, who is, uh, currently has an evidentiary hearing today, uh, the judge is considering a, a, a 25B2 motion, which means that he can uh, set aside the guilty verdict to not guilty, or he can order a new trial, or he can do nothing, or he can uh, uh, give a lesser sentence. Um, so it's, it's a momentous day today um, in terms of what the judge can do. And so I'm really excited. Now, I, this is... Uh an audience that may not know much about this this at all, and I know you're you're busy, but it's really important to, to let people know who is this Charles and what's the crime for which he's charged or which he's serving time. Charles is currently se serving life behind bars uh, for murder in the first degree, and we're arguing that it is a wrongful conviction, that uh, there was shoddy police work, that there was police coercion of the witnesses who have since recanted their testimony, um, and that the, the lawyer, his lawyer, has enough exculpatory evidence today to show that yeah, Charles right was now. not All right. the, the person that, that, that killed Alberto Rodriguez in 2009, uh, which happened in Springfield.